Konnichiwa, Tomodachi. It's been a couple months, but I'm back. Uh, this is Jeff's Japan Vlog, entry number seven. And lucky for you, you get a bonus Singapore edition. Woohoo! So without further ado, let's get into Jeff's Vlog. We start off our journey today with a trip to Akihabara, which is a electronic center near downtown Tokyo. Now, Akihabara, there's not a whole lot to do unless you're really into either electronics, made cafes, or five-story sex shops. If you're into that stuff, no judging. This is the place for you, bro. You should go hang out. You will have a blast. Because I'm not super into those things, I didn't really want to stay there too long, but definitely an interesting experience to go to Akihabara. Right next to Akihabara is Ueno, which is actually a really cool district. Here's a picture of the street there, and there's tons of people, but there's so many cool shops, and there's food vendors everywhere. It's, a, it's just a really nice environment to be in, and it gives you a real good feel for Japan, really. Um, we went right when the sakura were first coming out, so there was about well, there was one tree that had blossoms. We also checked out the Ueno Zoo, which is really nice. Actually, it's pretty big. They've got panda bears and tigers and elephants and monkeys. They've got a polar bear too, but he was hiding out. We didn't get to see him. In any case, the zoo is a good time. And Ueno is a cool place to go, so I definitely recommend it if you're down near Tokyo. At the beginning of April, I went with my friend Dale to Kyoto and Osaka during the height of the Sakura season. So there were lots and lots of people there, really crowded, but it's a beautiful place. You'll notice here all the tori, or the, the gates there. If you've seen Memoirs of a Geisha, those are in the movie. And we just kind of walked around all over and got to see the cherry blossoms and there was lots of people dressed up to celebrate and taking pictures everywhere. You'll see here that I'm using a ladle type thing to get water here and people will drink that to get good luck and good fortune. This is called the Philosopher's Walk and it's really just a bunch of cherry blossoms by the river. Because it's Japan, there was a sad teddy bear family camped out to fish in the river. Pretty sure this is something you would only see in Japan, by the way. After Kyoto, we went to Osaka, and this is us approaching Osaka Castle. And the view there was just amazing. You can see all the sakura with the, with the castle in the background. Just a really awesome place to be. Even the janitors there were dressing up like samurai. You can see how into it he is. He looks excited. And after the castle, we just went and walked around Osaka by the river. And once again, it's just it was just beautiful this time of year. And if you're looking for a dramatic place to stay, may I recommend the Dramatic Hotel King Dam in downtown Osaka. I'm sure you'll have all the drama that you could ever want. I couldn't get a lot of great pictures at night, but this is Kyoto at night. I had a Sakura Light Up Festival, and here's just a couple pictures from that. You kind of have to be there in person to really appreciate it, unfortunately. So if you're only into this vlog for Japan stuff, then I will warn you now that the rest of this entry is about Singapore. So you are free to turn us off now, or if you want to take a journey to Singapore with me, then we shall go. The first thing to know about Singapore is they do not mess around with their laws. No chewing gum, no illegal drugs, and they even warned us on the way there that drug traffickers will be killed. So don't do your illegal stuff in Singapore. Go do it somewhere else. So this is our cute little hostel that we stayed in. It's a great deal, only 25 bucks a night. Got to meet cool people from all around the world, Australia, New Zealand, Italy. The catch is it was on the fourth floor, and there was no elevator. So... That hike was fun. You know, other pictures you'll see here are Clarkey Central and the river around Clarkey, which is kind of the heart of downtown Singapore where the bars and clubs are. 
the first night in Singapore, we just wanted to walk around, get a feel for the place, do something low key. So we got drawn to this bar by this clever sign. See what they did there? Mm hmm. So we went in and we're just going to get a couple of beers. But what you need to know is in Singapore, beers and alcohol are very expensive. So, side story at the bar one of the bartenders who was a super awkward guy was like, Hey guys, you want to try some fun shots? Fun shots, right? And we're like, what's a fun shot? He's like, they're called shark bites. You get the drink, and it's blue. But when you drop the shot in it, it turns red. Like a shark bit you in the ocean. It's a fun shot. And <laughs> we just started laughing. <laughs> I couldn't contain myself because this guy was just so funny. Anyway, we did not... We did not end up taking any fun shots. We always told ourselves that we would go back and do them with, uh, with the weird bartender, but no, we didn't. I did play chess with one of the bartenders, and I went two and two with him for beers. Um, so I was not playing my best chess at the time. I was slightly drunk, but I got, I got my two wins in, so I'm pretty proud about that. Our first full day in Singapore, we went to go visit the Botanic Gardens, and it's a really nice place to go. It's completely free except for the National or or Orchid Garden that's in there, which is only five dollars and five Singapore dollars is four US right now. So really not expensive and it's a gigantic park. So we just walked around and took pictures of all the orchids which were really beautiful there. And really it was just a it was a nice day. They had a little rainforest path that you could walk on. We didn't really see anything in the rainforest but it's cool that they had one we uh sang the jurassic park theme song a lot there was this place called the cool house which you see next to me i think they named it after this guy right here but uh, actually it's a uh, it's a cooled greenhouse type place where they grow south american plants where they require a little bit of uh, cooler temperature than in tropical singapore we hit up arab street after the gardens they got a really big mosque there there was lots of prayers going on while we were there you could hear everybody chanting they've got 7-elevens everywhere including arab street this is some of the cool architecture that we saw just outside of that area later we went to go see the super trees which are the foundations are made of like plastic but they have actual plants that are growing up them and the theory behind them is they take vegetation waste and they combust it somehow and they plant them in these trees and the trees are supposed to put out really clean air. I'm not really sure how it works but something along those lines and probably in five to ten years they'll be a lot bigger than they are now in terms of the plant growth. After all that walking around we decided to take a lazy day and went to Siloso Beach which is a small resort island that's right next to Singapore and they've got lots of cool stuff there including this. This is the future! Ocean jetpacks. Woo! Besides ocean jetpacks, they also have like a wave pool that you can surf in and boogie board. We didn't do it, but we watched some people wipe out. They claim to have the southernmost point in continental Asia, which kind of confuses me because Singapore is an island in itself. And I guess they have a bridge that connects it or whatever. So yeah, we went there. This is the bridge to go up to the towers there. Here's our victory pose in front of the sign. And just so you know, the southernmost point in continental Asia is a huge makeout place. There are people making out everywhere in the bushes, so just be warned if you go. On Sentosa, they have something called the sky lift where you get on this little ski gondola thing and they take you up over the island and you can see all around. So that was, uh, was nice. You can see all the boats in the bay there, so many boats. And then when you get to the top, you go on this thing called the luge. Which I thought was going to be pretty lame. You're in these little go-karts and you look like you're going to go really slow. But you actually go super fast. And I almost crashed and wiped out a kid and his mom. Whoops. Sentosa has a lot of other things to see, including its own Merlion. There's the Universal Studios on the island. They've got snake charmers where you can get your picture taken. That was pretty cool, actually. I had never done that before. So Sentosa was a, a good time for sure. While we were in Singapore, we had to visit Chinatown, and I can tell you that it's exactly the same as any Chinatown you'll go to anywhere in the world. Got food, they've got cheap stuff, they haggle, so 
Don't buy your magnets at the gift shop. Buy them three for five dollars at Chinatown instead. That's Jeff's tip. Mike had to learn the hard way. All the walking around made us hungry, but we were literally all on different eating schedules. So we were stopping to eat every hour to hour and a half. But I decided to do this spicy challenge. I did a level two uh, one night we were there, and then I had to try level three. So here that is. It's going to be extremely hot. Are you ready? You're done. You're done. Bye, Jeff. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. Watch him drop it there. This is for the vlog. This is nothing. Yeah. No spice. Whatever. The level two is spicier. Oh, wow. Snap. He said that out loud. Did you hear that, folks? Uh, I gotta come out from the back. Level two is spicier. Level. I need level four. Where's level four at? Oh, it's not here yet. Not here yet. <laughs> not here yet. That's all, folks. So yeah, the spice was disappointing. Oh well, got over it. We decided to go wakeboarding the next morning. That's the happiest I looked all day. Because this was me the rest of the day. I probably went 20 to 25 times and I never went more than maybe 10 seconds. And that was like once or twice. I'm not good at wakeboarding. Our flight got delayed so we had to stay in Singapore an extra day. Terrible, I know, right? Uh, we decided to go to the Asian Civilizations Museum. So here's some cool sculptures from that. I couldn't get too many great pictures because it's dark in a lot of the rooms, but it's an interesting place to learn a lot about Asia. I would recommend going. It's only eight Singapore dollars. One of the last spots we went to is actually really the most iconic spot in Singapore where the Merlion is in Marina Bay. So we made it out there, I guess our last night there, and it was cool. It's just, it's really touristy. There's just lots of people taking pictures. There's Asian people with selfie sticks, which if you don't know what that is, it's a rod that you can hook up to your phone so that you can take selfies without having to hold the phone in your hand. Yes, this is a thing and it's becoming very popular in Asia. Should have thought about it and been a millionaire. Funny story cut in. So if you noticed in that last picture, I was posing so that it looked like the water from the Merlion was coming out of my mouth. So Mike saw it and was like, oh, I want to get a similar picture. Let me do that. So I got his phone and I was lining up to take the picture and it was taking a while. And Mike's just standing there like, <laughs> and everybody near him is looking at him so weird. He's like, Jeff, take the picture. So I take, I take a couple and then... He's like, we need to leave right now. We need to leave. I feel so embarrassed. <laughs> uh, me, I have no shame. I I can stand out like that and not care. But poor Mike. So we got out of there and uh, we left the premises and whatever. We weren't the weirdest people there. I can guarantee it. The last night we were there, we finally went to the top of the Marina Bay Sands Casino, which is that hotel with the big boat on it. And from there, you can see the views all around Singapore. It costs like... 23 Singapore dollars to go. I'd say it's worth it though to go and see everything. They actually have a pool on top of the hotel, but you can only go swim in it if you're a hotel guest. But might be worth staying in the hotel for a night. It's probably 300 bucks a room, but you get to go swim in the pool, and the pool overlooks the whole city. It's pretty awesome. And they actually have a fountain show that they do two or three times a night, depending on the night in the bay. We watched it from the roof this last night, but we actually saw it up close the first night. Definitely better to see it from up close than on the roof, but it was cool to get the other perspective. The soccer field at night was one of the coolest things in the bay, I thought. It would just be so awesome to play on that in the middle of the bay. And uh, they didn't have any like nets or anything around the field, so I think if you kick the ball over the net, it just goes into the bay. So. If you're looking for work as a ball boy, you might have an opportunity in Singapore. Mike was really adventurous with the food he ate on the trip, and this is definitely my favorite clip of him being experimental. Mike, eat the fish head. Oh. Do it. <laughs> like, I'm really good Do at it. taking the skin off. I can't look at it. Then don't look at it. <laughs> eat it. <laughs> it's bone. Eat, eat it. Bitch. Eat it. Eat it. Dude, he's gonna puke. <laughs> I'm fine. So that concludes my most recent Japan and Singapore adventures. Hope you enjoyed the ride, and we'll come back in a couple months for a new edition.